So these uh, fine tech paints, you can really layer them up quite a bit. You just need to wait for the layer underneath to be dry before you add a new layer on top. So if you wanted it to mix with the color underneath, all you would need to do is get your brush wet and kind of agitate that area a little bit. And from there, it will pick up that color underneath. Vic is going to do, oh, that's very pretty. Let's see, you're painting on black. That's yes. something I've, I've not seen done with watercolor. Let's, uh, let's get into this. Yeah, Tell definitely. Us about this. So before I wanted to start off with a demo, I have two different little separate demos for you today. One on a lighter background, then one on black paper. I just wanted to show you some of the awesome things that you can paint with metallics. Um, these paints are just incredible. They really just jump right off the page. And there's a couple different types of metallics, and I'm going to go into that as uh, as we paint together today. So I'm really now, looking I, forward to it. I did not. Those are watercolor, right? Yeah. So those I are watercolor. I didn't know you could paint watercolor on a dark surface, and I guess you can. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, some of the metallics work better on a darker surface than on a light surface. So I'm really so right. excited to uh, to show you guys what these are all about. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Oh, wow. So, that's beautiful. Thank you. So this is just going to be our, your basic illustration. I wanted to show you how you can embellish your illustrations that you have at home with metallic watercolors. You know, you don't have to paint something that's so vivid and colorful. You can do something that's a little bit more subtle. Um, now, these in particular, they may look like they're all kind of a milky white appearance. I, but I was going to ask that question. That's weird. Yeah, so these are called iridescent colors. And I actually have a little color sheet I wanted to show you guys. Hold it still. Show. Hold it still so we can see it. Okay. See okay. Yeah. So uh, the color actually picks up on black paper or a dark background. So it gives you a lot of opportunities to be able to have some really cool effects when painting over top of dark backgrounds in your paintings. So you don't have all those colors you just showed, but how do you know what you're dipping into? So um, it may be hard to see on the camera. It'll have a little bit of a tint. Okay. Um, I, I can tell you right now, I need these. I was doing watercolor <laughs> last night. Anybody in the comments, do you need them? Say so. Oh, yeah. Just wait till you see them on. Um, so as you can see, that blue just picked right up over top of that black. Wow. So you uh, you did an underpainting in watercolor as well? That is correct. So uh -huh. this is currently just a birch panel that I used a transparent watercolor ground on. And then I applied some um, black India ink. And I'm just using the iridescent blue from the, um, this set in particular. Um, and highlighting so does it matter? I mean, if you like other watercolor, if you dilute it more, it's not going to show up as much? That is correct. So these are going to be uh, water soluble. The more water you add to them, the more subtle the effect is going to be. I got to have these. These are called, uh, let's see, I got to tell you again. And it, by the way, this is not an infomercial. I know it sounds like one. We're not being paid for this, but these are called fine tech uh, and they're made by Royal Talons of North America. And uh, wow, I look at that. I'm yeah. blown away. So hey, you know, it's, it's like, Anytime somebody invents something new, I'm very excited about it. And when you paint these over top of lighter areas, you're going to get a lot more of a subtle effect. Yeah. Wow. So they're still a little bit wet, but when they dry, they really do have that same effect. Yeah. So do they dry about as quickly as normal watercolors? They do. Yes. They yeah. have a gum Arabic binder, so they're going to act very similar to your standard watercolor, and they're also going to be um, very compatible, so you're able right. to mix the two together. So what you're painting in now are, are fine tech iridescent colors. That is correct. All right. And how many different colors are there? Um, so there's six different iridescent colors in that line. Um, they okay. have standard and premium. All right. But they have four different types of paints. Um, they also have one called pearlescent, and the pearlescent colors are going to show up better on both the black and the white paper. So they have a whole lot of different pearlescent colors, um, especially in the gold and silver range. 
Yeah. So lots of um, calligraphers wow. end up using I, these. I want them all. <laughs> <laughs> so those are not just mixtures. Those are colors right out of the can. What happens, um, Vic, if you mix, let's say you wanted to create a special color with two iridescents. Can you do that? Absolutely. So not only can you mix these two color or any two colors together from the palettes, um, they're really high quality, so they're not going to get muddy. Um, you can also mix in a standard watercolor with them to create any tone that you'd like. Really? And how come they're, how come the, the tablets or the pads are ripply? Is that something to help the brush pick up the iridescence? So that's actually um, just an ode to how high quality they are. This unique yeah. ripple pattern is because they're hand poured. Oh. So all of these are inspected individually and hand poured. So they're very yeah. high quality. You know, um, I was I was once hand poured. I, we won't get into <laughs> that. Sorry. Yeah. So you could really get carried away here and embellish this as much or as little as you'd like to. Well, let's do a little bit of embellishing. Let's just go ahead and, and work on that for a minute. Let's see what else you're going to do. Sounds good. So um, this pigment in particular down here, this one has real silver in it. Real silver. Well, that's yeah. worth a lot of money. Silver went up about 2% uh, <laughs> this week. Exactly. So uh. use it sparingly or don't. Um, but they have a whole premium line that has a lot of really exciting different types of pigments in it. Yeah. Um, the silver in particular is really gorgeous. Yeah. So nice. I'm just using this over top of some watercolor pencils. So a little bit of the watercolor pencil is getting lifted up from the underneath layers and kind of yeah. mixing in. Um, that's going to be really nice when it dries because it will be a little bit more cohesive and a little bit more subtle than the areas where I've painted the, the fine tech down directly. Yeah. Nice. All right. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some other different types that they carry. Okay. Um, they have also a neon line of paints. Oh, I got to have those really too. <laughs> I'm going gonna, to have to get a second job. <laughs> you definitely are. These are really exciting. I know that, you know, you look at neon colors and you're like, oh my gosh, those are so saturated. I don't know where I'd use these but yeah. you can water them down um, to be a little bit more subtle. And uh, these are all premium pigments, especially the yellow is really exciting because it glows in the dark. Really? So, so if you turn the lights on and put a black light on it, it'll glow? That is correct, Eric. Uh, well, I'll have to put that in my disco room with the black light and the mirror ball. <laughs> I was just gonna say. I, yeah, I you, have, you have a disco room in your place, right? You know, I if I had a disco room, they'd they'd have to come lock me up because I am not good at dancing, and that would not be good for anyone. All right. Well, I'm willing to dance on camera, so <laughs> just I have, by the way. Wow, look at that! Really, just pops. Yeah. It you know, I, you know, neon colors. If 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 you use them sparingly, I mean, you can go go nuts anyway. I used to paint with neon acrylics, and uh, <clears throat> when I was a kid, you know, in the '60s, and we were doing all the psychedelic stuff, but uh, you know, just little touches here and there can re really make something pop. Now, what color are you adding here? So I'm going to go back in with the iridescent violet. This is one of my favorite colors. Um, so this one's going to act a lot like the blue that we first put down. Yeah. Oh, wow. Where it just picks up over top of the dark areas. So it's real. the dark is really important then. Exactly. If you're painting with the iridescent colors, you're either going to need to paint on something with a dark background yeah. or you're going to have to paint on dark watercolor paper, which I'm going to yeah. be showing pretty soon here. All right. Yeah. All right. And last but not least, I wanted to show off um, one more type of metallics. These ones are called flip-flop colors, also known as chameleon colors. So these ones are really unique because the color shifts depending on how you look at them. Ah. So they're quite <laughs> dynamic. Got a lot of different opportunities to use these in some special ways. Let me just grab that set. 
Yeah. You have to be careful because you might think you're you're doing drugs or something when you're using those. Oh, those <laughs> colors just changed. And now I'm going to get a lot of I'm going to, people are going to spank me in the comments for making that comment. All right. <laughs> Between your disco room and yeah. Yeah. So what are what are you back? You're back to which ones now? So these ones are going to be the flip flop colors. These are they the flip flops. Okay. Yeah. So these ones and, may be a little bit harder to see while they're wet, um, but once they dry up, we'll be able to see that color shift really nicely. How long have you been using these? I've actually been using these um, for quite a few years. Um, I believe Royal Talons just picked up the Fine Tech line about a year or two ago, but I've been using them ever since I used to work at an art store. Um, and they were on the shelf there. I've always loved them. So I have never noticed them. I've never seen them. That's interesting. Yeah, definitely. Well, the art stores are going to be slammed today. <laughs> Everybody's going to be buying these things. Yeah. Oh. All right. Nice. So um, next, I really wanted to show off that black paper because okay. painting with uh, metallics on black paper is just completely different than painting with them on a light surface. So I went ahead and drew out a little bit of a dragonfly just to show you guys um, what we're working with here. Okay, awesome. So for this one in particular, um, I actually decided to make my own palette based off of uh, what I'm going to be painting here today. So I have a mixture of multiple different types of paints. Um, it's really easy to make your own palette with these. They just pop in and out. Um, so I always like to use a little bit of water, um, pretty much on any type of dry pan watercolor, just so you can kind of let that water permeate down into the pan and then uh, when you're ready to start painting, you're going to get lots of uh, color lifted right out of that dry pan. Okay, so tell us again which colors you're using. So this first one is going to be that iridescent green color. And oh. again, this is going to be a color where when you paint on white watercolor paper, it doesn't really show up as well. But when you paint on the black watercolor paper, you get a lot of that really vibrant color payoff immediately. Right. I guess we better all, when we're when we're going online to buy all this stuff, we better get some black watercolor paper as well. Yeah, do you have definitely. a particular uh, black watercolor paper that you use? Um, I do. So this is actually the Rembrandt black watercolor paper. All right. Um, it is 100% cellulose, but it's sized for watercolor. Um, and it's really nice. It just kind of sits right on top, does its job. So. What does that mean, 100% cellulose? That is a foreign term to me. So there's a, there's a difference between cotton watercolor paper and cellulose. Um, most people prefer cotton just because it absorbs um, water and pigment. It can take a little bit more of a beating as far as scrubbing and lifting goes. Yeah. Um, but with your black paper in particular, um, you have a little bit less of that black pigment from the paper that's lifted yeah. off with the cellulose. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm just kind of working in that iridescent green in there. Okay. And then when you have your w black watercolor paper wet, you'll see that it's a little bit deeper, um, more saturated. Once it dries, it's going to go back to regular, but it's just something to keep in mind when you work on black watercolor paper as opposed to white. All righty. <clears throat> So I'm going to add a couple um, highlights onto the gouache area that I've painted. Um, I really like kind of doing the juxtaposition between a matte watercolor or gouache and then adding some of the metallic in there. Um, that way you just get a little bit more interest. So you're, you're lay, you laid it down with gouache initially and probably because regular watercolor on the black probably doesn't work as well. That is correct. So regular watercolor, you know, it's going to have all different types of opacities and transparencies. So you'll just have to, if you want to use standard watercolor, take a look at your colors and see which ones are going to be more opaque, because those are going to be the ones that show up nicer on that black watercolor paper. All right. Now we're going to the blue, I assume. Yes, we're I dipping mean... right into the one of the flip-flop colors, this one is a blue-violet shift color. Right. So it's going to look different at different angles. 
And I'm just going to go in and add a couple um, kind of lines throughout the wings with this color. Can't see. Your hand is in the way. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Flip-flop colors. Okay, so the three colors are flip-flop, iridescent, and what's the third? Uh, pearlescent and then neon. Oh, there's four. Oh my. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think our bank accounts are going to get a little empty today. <laughs> just guessing. Oh, that's pretty. Isn't that nice? So you can do uh, some just like really subtle kind of effects. I mean, if you could imagine a full-size painting and you just did the dragonfly wings with the metallic, um, it would be really nice and subtle, uh, but also just give your painting just a little bit of extra something. In the comments, Susan Hunter guys says, ouch, my credit card hurts. Yep, <laughs> it's going to hurt today, but you're going to be so happy when you're playing with these things. Yeah. I tried to do a, a, a watercolor portrait last night. I did two of them, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, never had done a watercolor portrait before, so it was fun. Oh, that's awesome. Now I'm going to do a neon portrait. Yeah, do a neon metallic portrait in your disco room. And I'm going to do one of Kyle Richardson and, and uh, Jeff Carlson uh, <laughs> dancing in the disco room. Oh, my gosh. Kyle would love that. Uh, you you don't want to see Kyle dance. Just uh, saying. I haven't. I have, I've known Kyle for over six years now, and I've never had the pleasure of seeing him dance. Oh, I've seen him dance. <laughs> we have we have a dance on the closing night of the plein air convention and he's oh, really? out there he's out there cutting it up oh my gosh that's too awesome all right oh look at that oh. so next i'm going to add in some of the just plain old pearlescent color um into the tips of the wings here um, and the pearlescent is the one that's going to show up really nice on both the white and black paper. Oh, nice. So it's going to be pretty opaque um, right off the bat. Nice. And then oh, we're really, just... They're just doing that makes everything else look more transparent. Yeah, isn't that interesting how that happens? <clears throat> Andy Gonzalez in the comments says he's going to do a, a neon of Jerry Garcia. How fitting. <laughs> All right. You'll probably and, never come on the show again. I'm teasing so much today. Oh, I don't mind at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then I'm just using a little bit of water to kind of blur out the edges um, of the color I just placed. Because these are water soluble, you can always work back into them with your wet brush uh, and either pick up, you know, color that you've already placed, even if it's dry. Um, just to make it a little bit more subtle, or maybe if you've placed it in the wrong area, you can always just use a wet brush and kind of scrub over that to pick it up. Oh, wow. Well, that's spectacular. Susan Hunter guys says she's surfing Amazon while watching. I think she's going to buy them all. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So next I'm going to uh, use some of the pearl white. Now, this is the one that I was talking about earlier, where it's really easy to tone this color using a standard watercolor. Um, so it's one of the pearlescent colors, so it shows up really nicely on both black and white paper. Um, I'm going to show you how you can mix your standard watercolor with that to create basically any color you'd like. So um, again, these have a gum Arabic binder. They're going to be really compatible with any watercolor. But today, I'm going to be mixing them with some Rembrandt watercolor. And I want a really bright yellow. So I could mix this with my neons if I wanted to. But I'm just going to be dipping directly into uh, my palette here. And I know I'm a monster. I'm mixing directly on top of my pan. You monster. You want, I'm a monster. If you want to keep your colors separate, um, you absolutely can do that just using two different brushes. So how do you, uh, is there a way to keep from polluting your color? You know, you're dipping right into the white there and now it's got some yellow on it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm oh. a kind of messy painter. I don't mind I noticed. it, but I noticed. 
if you do if you do mind it you can use two separate brushes to kind of pull the colors from place to place yeah um i do recommend using a separate water glass um if you're going to be painting a entire painting with standard watercolors and the pearlescent because right. your water glass can get very um polluted Bloody. very quickly yeah so depending on how much of, you know, the, the standard traditional watercolor you, hue that you want mixed with your pearlescent, you'll just have to keep adding more of that in there. So if I want this pearl color to be more yellow, I'll just add more standard yellow. And if I want it to have more of the pearl effect, then I'm just going to add more of that kind of... Cool. Pearl color. Yeah. Kingsman, yeah, and I don't know where he's from. In the comments, ask where to get the black watercolor paper. Kingsman, tell us what country you're in. Maybe that'll help us understand where you can get it. <clears throat> Usually art stores, Amazon. Um, you could contact Royal Talons Direct. They don't sell direct, but I think you could. I don't think they do anyway. Uh, they could probably tell you where a retailer is that carries it. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Maybe somebody from Royal Talons is watching in the comments that can answer that question. So yeah, you can just kind of build that up. Um, so yeah, the, the world is your oyster with that, with that white pearl color. Um, you're really able to tint that to any color you need. Um, alternatively, it does make a really nice highlight color if you just wanted to use it as a white. All right. It's hard to see because your hand's blocking, but I, ah, uh, now we can see. All right. Good. There you go. Oh. It's always hard to see metallics through the screen too. So <clears throat> hopefully that's picking up. Okay. For you guys. Yeah. It's uh, Tammy is asking because she tuned in late. It is black watercolor paper from Royal Talons. Um, <clears throat> Vic Hollins is our guest today. Vic, you, when you're done with that, you can frame it. I'll hang it in the disco room. I'll put a black light on it. You'll have to put some of that glowing color, that neon. Oh, you got it. If you want neon on there, I, I got you. I'm going to put it on there, and I'll, you, I'll be sure to mail it to you. All right. Or if you deliver it personally, we'll, we'll, we'll dance. There you go. We're what's your favorite? Neighbors. What's your favorite disco tune? I, I don't know. I, I hate to tell you, but I don't really know that much disco. Yeah, well... I was around when it originally came out. So I used to meet all those guys. I was a DJ in Miami. And so I got to meet all the Bee Gees and all the Casey and all those people who were doing that. In the comments, I want to know what your favorite disco tune is. All right. For anybody who knows what disco is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm just adding some um, kind of copper highlights throughout just to break up that uh flat kind of gouache area that i have i don't want to add too much i want there still to be some matte to juxtapose off of our metallics i'm gonna add some neon on here from a from a good pal eric all right okay the neon is out the neon's out guys and so the neon uh it's gonna work a little bit easier on the white paper um, unless if we add it onto areas that already have color underneath okay just so that it stands out more so you can see oh, how look at that. yeah that just kind of jumps right off doesn't it so that's because we have uh some watercolor underneath that's kind of acting as a base now it kind of looks like a firefly doesn't it that's cool i'm cool with that Oh, but That's even nice. though we just added a little bit of neon, it really saturated that quite a bit. <clears throat> so far, ABBA is winning the disco challenge. BGs are right up there. Uh, everybody's putting comments what their favorite disco tune is. <laughs> we, we just really get a little crazy on this show sometimes. Okay. So I thought I, uh, when I, I, when I was a radio DJ in Miami in the seventies, I also had a side job. I was a photographer. I did weddings and I had met the Bee Gees. And so they invited me to photograph a wedding. So I photographed a wedding and spent a basically all day and all evening with the Bee Gees. It was fun. 
Oh my gosh. There's only one, only one left now. You know, if my, if, if I were your age, I'd be like my parents talking about Frank Sinatra or something. It's like, who are these people? (laughs) (laughs) Tell us where you're from in the comments. And remember you can win uh, a, a pair of value specs today. <clears throat> All right. So here we have our kind of fully flushed out dragonfly. We have quite a bit of metallic on there. Um, but I also wanted to show you guys a couple other illustrations that I've done with uh, just the metallics in a couple different areas. All right. So how you can have a more complete illustration uh, with just touches of metallics. All right. So um, in the darker areas of the wings here, we have some of those iridescent colors that are just kind of subtle. They just come through when you hold it up to certain different lights. Uh Um, And some pearlescence here in the center of the eye. I like that. Hey, in the comments, hello, Holocus Sweden. I bet you can find that at the art store in, in Sweden. Let us know. Oh, wow. Sweden. These are called, these colors are called fine tech. I'm just going to show real quickly. Yeah. Uh, so, so they can see that Vic, uh, if I can find the, if I can find the slide. It's fine tech, F I N E T E C by Royal Talons of North America. But they, those of you watching in Europe, you know, they are a European company. They're going to be everywhere. All right. Now, show us that last one. I didn't get a chance to see it because I interrupted you. Oh, yeah. No, that's okay. Um, This one in particular, I just wanted to show. I embellished it using only one color. Um, This is using some of the gold of the pearlescent line. And as you Mm -hmm. can see, it's just in a couple different places, but it just adds uh, another kind of layer of dimension and um, complexity to the piece, which I think uh, just kind of helps me makes it pop a little bit, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. That really pretty gold. Well, I like your style; it's fun. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Well, that uh, that dragonfly is going to look pretty darn good in the disco room. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I feel like maybe you paint a little disco ball over here, and it will oh, be all maybe, set. Yeah. To go. Well, go ahead and do that right now. Just go ahead and paint a disco ball. <laughs> All right. Have you ever painted a disco ball before? You know what? I have not <laughs> painted a disco ball before. Um, so I made a disco ball uh, when I had my DJ business when I was little. Oh, that helps a lot. Um, I had to cut mirror in a little tiny squares. I had cuts all over my fingers. I had like 600 little squares or something I had to cut. It was tough. Oh, my gosh. And I glued them all on. <clears throat> it was fun. Something I won't do again. Yeah, that that sounds maybe not fun, but I'm glad that you had a nice time. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine having that many cuts on my hands. <clears throat> Death by a thousand cuts, right? Absolutely. Now, you're using iridescent white, so if you put something over that, would it uh would it kind of glow or it, it so it's- yeah, definitely. So these uh, fine tech paints, you can really layer them up quite a bit. You just need to wait for the layer underneath to be dry before you add a new layer on top. So if you wanted it to mix with the color underneath, all you would need to do is get your brush wet and kind of agitate that area a little bit. And from there, it will pick up that color underneath. Can you tell us what brush you're using, by the way? Everybody wants to know these things. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the um, Neptune uh, brush. I absolutely love this brush. I have it in a couple different sizes here. Um, But this is by Princeton, and this is going to be their one of their watercolor brushes. It's a synthetic um, Kalinske um, brush, and it's going to be extremely absorbent. It holds a whole bunch of water, so you don't have to keep dipping back into your water. Um, they make some really beautiful um, cat's tongue brushes or dagger brushes. Yeah, um, I'm going to go buy some of those today because <laughs> I was painting. I was having a struggle last night because I was doing portraits that were very tight, and uh, I had a you know a big watercolor brush that just was held too much water and I was struggling with it. 
oh yeah, definitely. These ones hold just the perfect amount. Um, I highly recommend them, especially, you know, you don't have to buy the the full price Kalinske. These ones, um, because they're synthetic, are a little bit more cost effective, but they really yeah. do work just as nice. Yeah. Princeton's good product. All right. All right. Oh, that's good. So I'm going to put on my leisure suit, get my platform shoes, <laughs> uh, get my Nick Nick shiny shirt, my puka shells around my neck, uh, grow my hair long real quickly, and hang <laughs> that up in the disco room. And, and by the way, I read last night that bell bottoms are back in a big way. So are you wearing bell bottoms yet, Vic? You know, I wore bell bottoms in the 90s when I was a little kid. I'm pretty sure I had a pair of overall bell bottoms. Um, oh, cool. Well, they're coming back, so it's your lucky day. You okay, learn well, the, learn things on this program. I don't know if those are still going to fit, but um, I'll do my best to look around and see what I can find. Well, you you uh, now yeah, they're going to be completely different. They're going to change them, of course. Oh, that's true. That is true. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I'm dating myself, but then again, if you can't date yourself, who can you date, right? <laughs> it's true. You got to love yourself first. That's right. Somebody said B-52s. They were not disco. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is this is fun. So you're highlighting, adding some additional highlights and iridescent. Nice. I like it. Exactly. Yeah, I'm just going back in with that pearl white. Um, again, I think it really is the most versatile color just because you're able to tone with it or you can just so easily add highlights. Um, and then, you know, if you have something like a colored pencil or even a pastel underneath, the more you mix that color together just by moving your brush around, the more color will come up and mix you into that white. You could paint this on top of pastel. I thought it would, it would, uh, the water on it would make it uh, dissipate. Um, it will mix that pastel pigment in with the metallics. I see. Okay. So, so it's it'll, going yeah. to be like if you were to add water to a pastel painting, it's really going to, uh, yeah, saturate that area and move that pigment around. So, okay. you know, only. Vic we have a question. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Karen oh, Jones right. asked, which of the brushes do you think you use the most? Um, size 12 Neptune round is my number one go-to brush. All right. Um, yeah, but it, you know, it just depends like what size you normally like to paint in with your watercolors. Um, yeah, if you paint a lot smaller paintings, you may want to go with a smaller round or if you paint larger, then you may want to go bigger. Yeah. But so there's a question wrong. from Iva says, can you use acrylic? I assume she means, can you paint on top of acrylic? I would think you could. Yeah, absolutely. So again, these are going to be water-based. So these are going to mix just fine. Uh, there are definitely other acrylic mediums that you can mix in to make your acrylic paint metallic. Um, you can mix the fine tech in. You're probably just going to have to make sure to be mixing that on the side because if you mix your acrylic directly in the pan here you may end up you know permanently altering it i think they're talking about glazing on top of dry acrylic and that's my guess oh, oh yeah interesting yeah absolutely yeah you i don't know about oil you can paint oil over acrylic but you can't paint acrylic over oil that is correct yeah yeah and i don't know about water mixable oils because i don't know if if water would reactivate them or not royal talons makes those we'll have to find out yeah definitely we make the cobra line i'm not sure about that i i would i would hate to tell you yes or no either way so yeah those are great They're oh really yeah great. those are fantastic those are terrific for ones. those of us who travel because you know when you have to look for terps or or a brush cleaner or something not fun in a foreign country Exactly. You don't have to fly with any of that when you use those water mixable oils. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. Well, very nice. Yeah, definitely. It's coming well, together. Vic, you are, you are really getting everybody excited. Somebody in the comments said, I think there's going to be a fine tech revolution created <laughs> by the Dreamliners group, which is the, the group that's in the, uh, many of them are in the chat. Uh, somebody in the chat could tell everybody else what Dreamliners is. Lots of them, a couple thousand. All right. 
Very nice. Yeah, so I'm just going back in with a darker um, pearlescent color and kind of blending it into some of my highlighted area. Right. So normally with these fine tech paints, I'll do, um, I'll add them close to the end of my mixed media illustrations. Yeah. And then if I need to add another layer on top, if necessary, I'll, I'll do right. that. Okay. So can I direct your painting? Can I tell you something to do? Yes, absolutely. I might screw it up, but pull out your neon. My neon. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Now I want you to take the brightest red okay. neon and look for the appropriate place to put it on one of those flowers and make oh. that flower pop. Okay. All right? Awesome. Yeah. We can definitely yeah. do that. Cool. Well, I'm just going to use this neon as kind of a highlight um, tone. Wow. That really makes it pop though, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. You don't need much. You don't need much. Just a little touch here and there. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. It just pops right off. Great idea. And did you use that neon green in the eyeball? Because it looks like you did. I, you know, I used a little bit of the of the neon yellow right here. Yeah. Okay. That's right. And it really made it pop. Okay. Remind you, uh, reminder to everybody. If you, oh, oh. <laughs> Amazon has just now sold out of the neon set. Well, I guess we have power <laughs> to sell things. You guys got to jump on it. Well, you'll have to find it at your local art store or I'm sure go to uh, blick.com or somebody like that. Wow, those flowers really pop when you do that. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. You just need to add a little bit amount, just kind of glaze it on there. And uh... <laughs> Anytime you need help with a painting and you don't know what to do, just call me. I'll be sitting in the disco room with a... A, uh, a martini and uh, and I'll tell you I'll just tell you what to do to fix your painting although quite frankly you might not like it I was just gonna say I, I see a lot of really bright neon paintings in my future <laughs> if you're pulling your inspiration from the disco room <laughs> oh I love that that blue is so wonderful yeah isn't that nice so I'm just painting this right on top of some of that pearlescent um, which is really great. You can paint uh, traditional watercolors over top of the metallics as well, just to bring them back down a little bit. If it ends up being too much metallic for you, there's always ways to fix it. Yeah. Somebody told me not to forget the tie-dyed shirts. We could paint our tie-dyed shirts with this, but it would probably wash out. I bet, yeah. But then again, you know, if you're in the disco area, you never wash your clothes. So. <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. Oh, somebody said in the comments, how about some silver on the eyelid? Some silver. Ooh, all right. Let's see here. All right. You are very brave, Vic. Oh, I don't mind. It's art. It's supposed to be fun. We're just having a good time with it. That's all uh, that's important to me. Dev Duke's question is, is the underpainting watercolor or some other medium? Will you answer that? Um, the other painting. Which one? The underpainting. Oh, the underpainting. Yes. The underpainting. Um, so these are just wooden cradled uh, panels. And I prepped it with a transparent watercolor ground. So you can still see the wood through. And then um, I did a watercolor wash and kind of built up my areas with watercolor. And then I go in with watercolor pencils. Um, the next layer is fine tech or metallic watercolor. And then my last step, I normally go back in with my watercolor pencils um, to add my final details. Well, you, um, you, you really muted that eyelid with the silver. You probably need yeah, to put a highlight on it. Definitely. So it may just... Um, <clears throat> Sinks in a little, it'll change, but it does, uh, it is more metallic now. Yeah, definitely. I can always go back in with some darker colors, re, you know, put my shadows and highlights in there. I may end up doing that with a colored pencil as well. You can just go right over top. I'd like to remind everybody that play is important. You know, this may not be what you normally do, but uh, uh, playing with something like this can be very freeing. My dreams last night were really wonderful because I don't normally spend a lot of time on watercolor, and I certainly don't do watercolor portraits. But, man, I got so excited about it. I spent hours out in the studio last night, and now I want to get this and play with it. 
because it just, you know, art is, is also about play. And when you play, you're going to get an open mind about new ways to approach things, no matter how you paint or what you paint. So uh, we, we all need to go get some fine tech uh, colors. <laughs> Yeah, especially with, you know, metallic watercolors, you just got to have, you know, no fear and add them and just have fun and play around with them. You can always, um, you know, change up what you're working on. And especially if you have some watercolor paintings that you don't mind experimenting on top of, these are really kind of fun just to embellish what you've already worked on. Oh, yeah, this is this is much fun. Well, you've done a really terrific job today. And what I'd like you to do is just to give us uh, a little bit of a summary, because there's a lot of people who tuned in late and they might not have seen the other things you did. So what, pull out the other things and show them what you did. Just point it out. And then yeah. also the, the black watercolor paper. Yeah, definitely. So um, basically today we've just played around with these metallic watercolors here. They're water soluble, you know, they have a gum Arabic binder, so they're compatible with your standard watercolors. And basically today we just went over the different types of um, metallics that there are, the pearlescent, the flip-flops that shift back and forth to different color. Um, we also have our neon colors. And then we have the iridescent colors, which mainly show up on the black paper. So we did a I little bit all. of a... What was that? I, I said, I want them all. I'm oh. going to have to buy them all. Um, and then, yeah, we, we painted this little disco firefly on some black watercolor paper, um, just using all the different types of metallics. And then we went ahead and added uh, some metallics to our standard watercolor illustration. Um, you can really see it here kind of shining over top of those darker areas and around that eye. I think it's interesting that you, you took a regular birch panel and you put a, an, a, did you say an acrylic uh, okay. ground on it? Uh, it's a transparent watercolor ground by Daniel Smith. Oh, it's a Smith. watercolor ground. Okay. Yeah. So Daniel Smith, they make a couple different types of watercolor grounds. They have like a gold metallic. They have a plain white one. But they actually advertise that you can paint that um, ground over top of rocks, you know, wood, any type of different surface. It doesn't have to be porous. And you can actually paint watercolor on top of it. Do you so, have to seal uh, the, pan the panel after painting it? Um, yeah, I do seal them. I seal them with a UVLS um, varnish. Um, and that won't oh, mess up the watercolor? It won't reactivate it? That is correct. Is it spray varnish? Yep, it's a spray varnish. Um, Golden makes one. So does Krylon. Um, I live in Tucson, so I want to make sure that, you know, none of my colors are going to fade. Um, but with if you're using Fine Tech, those are professional grade. They have very good light fast rating. Um, you don't really need that much protection on top. Outstanding. Well, why don't you come back on camera so everybody can meet you? That would be really terrific. Okay. Our guest today is Vic Hollins, and she's going to be coming on camera here. So you guys can give her a thumbs up and applause. There she is. Yeah. So uh, you did a really terrific job today. Uh, you, I, I know this was not your intent, but you are a great salesperson. You may have, you sold out Amazon in 20 minutes. And uh, um, so I hope that Royal Talons gives you a great big bonus or sends you a bouquet of flowers or something. <laughs> that's totally not my intention. I really do just genuinely love these metallic watercolors. Um, I think that they add so much life and energy to illustrations. So uh, it really wasn't me. They, they tend to have this nasty habit of just selling themselves. Um, yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's all well, the magic that they put in them. So It's been fun having you on today. And I'm trying to bring some uh, new and different things to Art School Live. I'm always looking for comments from people, what they want. But Vic, you've been terrific. Uh, round of applause for Vic Hollins. Uh, I wish I had some applause music. I would just, I would have some applause in there, but I don't. So Vic, thank you for being on today. And I want to uh, show everybody one more time 
And again, this is not a paid infomercial. I just like to help out friends and, and Royal Talons is a friend. They do sponsor uh, most of our, uh, our events, uh, the plein air convention and our others, but this is their fine tech line. Uh, so you can get that and it's a wonderful line. So uh, Vic, thank you so much for being on today. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm anxious to hang that uh, firefly in my disco room. Thank you so much for having me, Eric. It's been an absolute and, or, pleasure. Or maybe I'll hang it next to my self-portrait with my neon. Ooh, there you go. I think that's the perfect spot. Yeah, I'm a disco room neon kind of guy. Thank you, Vic.